right, cool. All right, Sammy, thanks for doing this, first of all. Uh, yeah, for real, like, I just appreciate you doing this. Uh, I've only interviewed maybe like three nurses so far. One was, I think, just the RN, or not just the RN, but the RN, uh, nurse anesthesia, like the doctoral program. You familiar mm -hmm. with that? Yeah. And then nurse anesthetist. Nurse anesthetist, right. And then now it's you. Um, could you give like a brief synopsis of who you are? All right, uh, let's see. So I'm Samelia, but I go by Sam. Um, I've been a nurse for seven years. And then I graduated last year, the nurse practitioner program. I just got my certification and yeah, I'm, I'm 29. I don't know what else you want to know. <laughs> you you graduated how long, seven years ago or what you say? I graduated my undergrad seven years ago as a nurse. I've been a nurse for seven years, but I finished my master's program last year to be a nurse practitioner. Oh, okay. So what's the difference between just the undergraduate as far as nursing and nurse practitioner? All right, so undergrad, I did the four years um, registered nurse program. That I got my bachelor's in nursing. Mm -hmm. So I was an RN for, I'm still an RN, but um, so that's like bedside nursing, hospital, wherever you want to work at. And mm -hmm. then nurse practitioner is basically like people compare it to like physician assistants, mm -hmm. um, et cetera, because now I can diagnose, I can treat, I can write prescriptions. And then I specialize in family. So I'm um, doctor's office, urgent care, things like that. Mm -hmm. as opposed to like and then there's different type there's AQ care so you'd be in the hospital some urgent cares and then they have like NPs that works in like the surgical departments in like um bariatric surgery so like there's different field that an NP can work in but now as opposed to just like bedside where I like take orders from the doctors I can put my own order in and I'm kind of like the provider so I don't like, well I am the provider but I'm not like there's certain things I can't do that our doctors can do Okay. And then you say it's like you specialize in a part? Yeah. So there's different kind. Um, I did family. There's family, um, geriatric, women's health. Uh, women's health is like the OBGYNs, um, pregnancy and things like that. Um, and then there's AQ care. There's AQ care. Um, there's pediatrics. So I think there's like seven or something like that. I'm not sure how many uh, subspecialties they have. So what made you choose your special? I picked family because I wanted to be have the options of doing everything. So as a family provider, I can see peace. I can see anywhere from zero day old to 100 plus. Um, I can work in women's health. I can do dermatology. I can pretty much do anything that I want to, mm -hmm. as opposed to just like my girlfriend, she did women's health. So she only works in women's health, like OBGYN. Um, right. pop smears all that good stuff um but as a family nurse practitioner i can do women's health if i wanted to or just be like a primary care provider okay. so that's why i picked it hey did you did you always want to be a nurse or like what was the first career path if you had one so i actually never knew like what i wanted to do um coming to america my mom always like when i came to america she's always like oh you should be a, you should be a nurse you should be a nurse because in african household there's like well, first of all, there's five um, career paths and anything outside of that is like a disgrace. But medicine oh, is definitely oh, one of them. You got to get them five. You gotta... I'm so serious. It's doctors, lawyer, pharmacist, nurse, and engineer. Anything outside of that, you're a disgrace. <laughs> so um, coming in and she's always like, oh, you should do nursing because with nursing, there's less discrimination. And um you will like always have something to fall back on. And I would joke around with her and be like, I ain't gonna do nursing. I've never like thought about what I wanted to be. I always feel like I have a lot of time. Like, you know, as a kid, I'm like, I'm only in middle school. I'm only in elementary school. And then it was time to apply for college. And I was like, oh shoot. <laughs> I never thought about what I wanted to do. Um, but like, I always feel like nursing is always in my mom's dream. I do want to say though, I've always enjoyed um, science. So mm -hmm. once I started my program freshman year, I realized that I liked it a lot. So I stuck with it. Um, not that I was going to change anyway, because like going into college, it was like, I don't have time to change major or joke around. I'm going to do this and be out in four years. And that was that. Uh, a lot of people jump around. They have different majors. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's a waste of time, waste of money. <laughs> no, it is. Big waste of money, too. Yeah. That's what's up. Where you go to undergrad at? I went to Duquesne in Pittsburgh. Okay. Yeah. It's a Division of One school. It's a PWI. Um, I didn't care much for sports. So, mm-hmm. yeah, but I went to Duquesne. So, and then I did Esters at Widener in Chester, somewhere in PA, Chester, PA. Okay. Are you, and you in PA, PA now? Yeah, I'm still in PA. You plan on staying in PA or what's the move? No, I actually want to move. I don't know when. I don't know where. But eventually, I do want to, like, move somewhere else. Oh, okay. Hey, do you do, I think I saw you do travel. Do you do travel? I did. So I recently started travel nursing. Travel nursing's always been, like, it's been one of my dreams since I graduated undergrad. Mm-hmm. But, of course, it was, like, you have to get experience. So I got a year of experience. And then I kept working. And I was like, you know what, let me just look at my master's since I don't have no kids. I ain't married. This is the best time. And that took two and a half years because I did it part-time while I still working full-time. And then now that I was done there, I was like, okay, now I'm going to try this travel nursing thing that I always wanted to try. And so far, I like it a lot. Um, I've had the chance to work on the bariatric surgery floor, right? Currently, I'm working on the um, oncology unit. It's very different than what I'm used to, but I'm learning a lot. How so? Um, so my background where the last five and a half years, I worked on the neurosurgery, uh, neurology and med surgery floor. Whereas like the brain, I didn't see from like dementia, confused patient. I felt like I was in a nursing home. <laughs> Not really, but like a lot of like stroke patients, confusion, mm-hmm. dementia. Now oncology is cancer. So now it's like, these people are like really sick. I'm learning so I'm like, there's definitely like a learning curve because like cancer is its own like world. Mm-hmm. In nursing school, you get like maybe like a chapter on oncology. And then I'm learning all these new terminology, learning like about chemos mm. and different things that they do, different treatment type, different type of cancers. Um, yeah, and it's, it's, it's been a whirlwind, but I like it a lot. I will say though, because of my background, I don't do chemo because I'm not chemo certified, but mm. I do everything on the unit. Hey, people say, like nurses say, that cancer floor is tough. Like it's tough on you. It is. It's very, um, it can be very depressing at times. Right. And it's been like, maybe I've done there's like two or three experiences that's definitely made me cry before, but um, I'm learning a lot, you know, like somebody got to do it. So why not? Yeah. All right. Okay. So what's the, I guess, what was your undergrad experience like? Um, Undergrad work, work. All right. So Duquesne is, like I said, it's a PWI. So okay. it's, um, 10 minutes from Duquesne is Pitt. That's where all the people from Duquesne and stuff go to party. Mm-hmm. And then from Pittsburgh to college town in general. So mm-hmm. most of the time, I mean, I had to work. I had like a work study. And then eventually I got like a CNA job at the hospital. Mm-hmm. Just like to help my mom, like offset the balance to pay like my tuition and stuff. I mean, there was time where like, I mean, I made time to go out and things like that. But primarily like my focus was like working mm-hmm. and yeah. Dang, so did you have any fun when you was in undergrad? I know I did. I did. Oh, okay. Um, like, like I said, I try to like balance it, but I'm not really like, it's not like I'm not, I'm not like a big party party person anyway. So like, you know, I did things like my girls, like, so Duquesne always, every weekend, they would have stuff on campus. Um, So like students don't have to like, you know, go out and party or like go out and do anything crazy. So we'll have like bingo nights and like game night, or whatever. And like, there's a lot of prices. So we always look forward to that. Cause I'm like very competitive, so we always got like get prices. Sometimes you get an iPad and things like that. So that was fun. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, was yes. like, I know you ain't just working, 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 not doing. Oh no, nah. <laughs> it wasn't all work and all school. Yeah. All right. I mean, that's better. Did you join a sorority or anything? Yeah, my time is going. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was in a. I was in a, um, all right, so I didn't do a Divine Nine. I mean, I was in like a professional sorority. Mm-hmm. It's called Cayeta Five. And it's like a professional nursing sorority. It originally, it started off for like minorities, but like it has opened it up for um, to incorporate everybody else. And it's also now is included with like male as well. So I guess you call it like a fraternity because it's not just females. Okay. Yeah, so that was my undergrad. And then I got inducted into the Honor Society. Uh, 
for nursing in my master's program. So. Okay. Yeah. And okay, so as far as masters, well, is it worth it to do it to do the masters? Would you think? Like if you could go back. So I think it's worth it to do my masters because it gave me an option. Um, bedside. If you want to do bedside nursing for the rest of your life, that's great. I've seen nurses who's like done bedside mm. since they've been like a nurse, and some of them are miserable in like the old age because bedside burns you out. It really does. I mm. what inspired me to go to grad school. I had like a horrible shift, and I was like, yeah, I don't want to do this forever. So I have the options of like I can say like a cushion job if I want to, mm. going to work in a doctor's office or um, as an NP in certain states. I can open up my own practice. You know what I mean? Oh. So that's definitely worth it for me. Um, since I started travel, certain states and certain places does pay travel and more money. And it's like, it's nice. It's like the best of both worlds. So I get to pick if I want to have that comfort and cushion or mm -hmm. if I want to, you know, do bedside and like go really hardcore. So I definitely think like getting a master's is worth it. If you like are tired of bedside, if you see yourself doing bedside forever, then it's not worth it because you can just do travel nursing and make things. Hey, I heard them uh, travel nurses in Cali was getting paid, or it's probably still getting paid. They are, but you got to balance things out, the cost of living and gas prices, but mm -hmm. travel nursing is always going to make more than um, bedside. Mm -hmm. It's it's not an easy job. Like, I go to an assignment, I get two days of orientation, and it's, you're by yourself. Yeah. So, yeah. It, and it's not even two days. It's basically like, all right, this is the unit. This is where this is at. This is where this is at. All right, you cool, good. All right, you by yourself. <laughs> it's not for the week you definitely got to have like experience yeah okay yeah. How, hey, how much is gas where you at uh 4.95 last time i checked oh that's cheap as hell yeah. oh how much is gas where you at i mean ours went down it's like five now it just went down oh wow yeah yeah i got my bike <laughs> so <laughs> once it start i i have no problem riding my bike i'm okay with that Hey, you work out or anything? Say that again. Work out or anything? So I used to like really consistently before COVID hit, oh and then when all the gym closed, it was like all right. I used to go to LA all the time, like faithfully, even had a trainer. And then when the gym closed, it was like all right, we, I'm going I'm to work at a home. They do that. And once they open back up, it's like all my motivation was gone. So like I'm trying to go back into the gym, but now I'm just like. Eh. <laughs> like, uh, you got I want to go back though because health is wealth, man. Especially and like, and that always hit me. Like I said, working on oncology for it's like I see people are sick, and I mean sometimes you can do everything right and still get cancer or still get sick. But like I see people are sick, and so I'm like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta take care of health. You got you got one life, one body, so you gotta respect that. All right, that's what's up. Your mama don't be on you because I know African moms. Some of them be like brutally honest or at least the ones i know now nah, my mom is like really chill like she's mad quiet like i'm i'm the one with the mouth so <laughs> i'm so serious i'm the one with the mouth like people always be like that can't be your mom like you sure that's your daughter but it's like one of us gotta stick up for the other person you know what i mean <laughs> yeah one of us gotta stick up for the other person so um one of us got to have the mouth. So my mom is really quiet. She's really sure I'm her only child. So she won't really be saying much. She don't, you the only child? Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm the only child for my mom. Oh, okay. Mom, my dad, he's a different story. <laughs> he for the street. <laughs> that's what, hey, that's daddy's though. <laughs> mm, we're not going to discuss that. The double standards of men, but okay. We're not going to talk about that. All right. Hey, you, you're not married. Are you married? Not at the moment. <laughs> what am I saying? I'm not married. No, I'm not married. Not you yet. Single, One what's up? Say that again? You dating single, what's up? All right, so I'm not dating. You're not dating? I'm not. All right, I shouldn't say I'm not dating. Well, no, I'm not dating. I recently, like, you know, got on, like, the dating apps because mm -hmm. I feel like... I don't know if it's my city or what, but it's trash out here. But I feel like it's everywhere because I'm hearing my girls. I, I talk to other people in different cities. Like I'm um my the one my one girl in Cali, she was like, nah, it's trash here too. So I don't know. I don't know. I maybe it's just the dating pool. Y'all in big it cities. How is it trash? It ain't like I'm in a small town in Illinois. Yeah, y'all in big places. Ain't no trash. <laughs> I maybe mean that's my boy. 
I can say it's not trash, but like you got way more options than somebody like me. Got. Maybe there's more trash in bigger city. I don't know. <laughs> nah, but um, so I recently I'm trying now that I'm like past my certification exam because that took a lot of my focus and just like other things. Mm-hmm. I'm ready to start dating. I just haven't officially started yet. But like I said, I recently like engaged in the apps and stuff. So we'll see. But it's a lot of weirdos on the apps. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I That's think a lot of strange people. A lot of who? Strange people. Yeah, I believe that. I think the app kind of took away, uh, I would say, like how things used to be organic. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I think like it would lead more to socially awkward people. People don't know how to have a conversation in person. They will probably right. feel more comfortable on the app. That's true. I mean, honestly, I feel like there's like a pros and cons because like I'm like not opposed to long distance um dating and like without the app, I wouldn't be able to like, you know, meet people in like like in different cities or far, far away as opposed to the app that I, I can like meet people and like set my radius to all, as far as I want to and right. meet whoever I want to. Um, So I'm not opposed to the app. You just really got to be patient yeah. and filter to a lot of BS. Hey, do you feel like you had to focus on school and you couldn't date while doing that? So, again, going back to, like, my upbringing, in African household, you're not mm-hmm. allowed to date. I wasn't allowed to date until I graduated high school, right? And honestly, they don't even want you to date until you, like, finish school. And all of a sudden, they want to be like, where's your husband? Where's your boyfriend? Why are you asking me that? I was not allowed to have one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like, not being allowed to date in high school doesn't mean I didn't do it but still right. <laughs> and then going to college I knew like nursing was very like um serious so definitely like my number one goal my mom always says like there's always been gonna be time for relationships so you gotta focus on education my first goal was to get out of nursing school in four years nothing more and then I always say like you know I'm gonna date when I want to and in the summertime you know when I came home or like even when I still on campus um I went into scene, like, you know, go on dates or whatever, but it's just, like, nothing serious that, I, like, became of them, so. Oh, okay. I got you. I wouldn't say hinder my dating life, but maybe it hindered it. I don't know. Yeah, no, I see that, I see that commonly amongst Black people. Like, we push education so hard that we just block out everything else when really education is probably, like, this long. You know what I'm saying? Like, school, like, that long. But then right. a life partner is forever. Right. But then, like in my school, it's people get married. It's people that's been married. It's people that's like engaged right now. And yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, like, um, there is some the freshman year. We thought it was weird because the one girl she came to school, um, she was married. She got married that summer. She was mm-hmm. like, they were like eighteen. They were like, you married? She's like, yeah. Da, da, da. They were white. <laughs> and I was just like, we all thought it was like weird, but. They're doing good. I mean, they knew what they wanted. So it works for some people and some people it don't. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like, I don't know. I think it's possible. Some people don't think it's possible. Though. Like, you can't do both, but it's. No, you can. You got to have balance. Like, you really got, but to be able to do that, you have to be very disciplined. Yeah, for sure. I think to do any of this stuff, like anything in healthcare, you damn near got to be disciplined. Though. That's true. Yeah, I agree. It's tough, it's tough, tough. So, uh, fellas, go ahead and slide in her DM. Uh, Whoa. <laughs> Not sliding her DM. Sliding her DM. All right, well, we're going to do that. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. <laughs> I just got a few requirements. Uh-oh. What's the requirements? That's her. You, you all right. We're going to talk about it. I'm going to give you my top five, all right? You got a top five? Yeah, my top five. You can't smoke. <laughs> nah. uh, every time I said, I always get like, what about weed? of course everybody gonna say that yeah um maybe like as long as you're not like a pot hair like but definitely no cigarette no, no. Oh, yeah. i got I, you. I, I, um nice no smoking yes um you gotta be a christian yeah. i've had like a lot of like muslim and other religion guys shots out to me and there's nothing wrong with that because i've had like you know i got friends who like the mom is Christian, the dad is Muslim. I just know like my family and like my, it's going to be, it's going to be a, like a tassel. It's going to be a hassle. And I don't want to deal with that. Right. So I can't date a non-Christian. And of course, like when it comes to Christianity, it'd be like, do I got to go to church on stuff? Man, 
Your relationship with God is your relationship with God. Um, I got you. Not just Christian by mouth either, but whatever. Uh, you got to be family oriented. Okay. Because I'm big on family. I come from a big family. My great grandfather had 26 kids. So, really? I got, yeah, I got mad cousins. <laughs> mad cousins. <laughs> My dad has five girls. Um, she, but, was he so trying I, to shoot for that boy or he just never? He, I think that what it was. I think he kept going, but that was, it just never happened. And I just <laughs> want to probably stop. My younger sister is um, nine years old. And my dad is in like almost his 60s, so. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, what was that, three? That's three. You got yeah. It. You got to be ambitious and goal-oriented. You got to be doing something with your life. Like, um, I'm not looking for like a million dollars I'm already made, but like you can't be a bum because I'm not a bum. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what do you mean by and, ambitious? Like, what was that? What do you mean by ambitious then? Because you can be ambitious and still not make money. No, you can, you got to be ambitious and goal-oriented and career-oriented. Like, you can't, like, have a dream of doing whatever, and then you're not working towards it, you know what I mean? Like, if you're actively, if something is your passion and you're actually pursuing it, mm-hmm. while you see potential other stuff into it, then maybe we can make something work. But so what if that passion just doesn't make money for real like that? But it's still a passion. That's cool. Nah, you're not the one for me, bro. <laughs> So it's and, not ambition then. No, no, it, no, it is ambition, but it gotta be, you, you need something to make you money this day and day. Like, it got to be balanced. Like, I'm not trying to be the breadwinner because I feel like some guys are intimidated when the woman is the breadwinner. We need balance. So both of us can put our bread and bring bread to the table. Because you but, know there are artists. That's, that's their ambition. Their ambition is about art, right? But artists are broke. They're still yeah, ambitious, but they're broke. So yo, your I answer know. probably not ambitious. Your answer probably like bread. Which yeah, is- well, you need to do if you get, let your ambition make you money. Cause I definitely had this guy who I used to talk to, and his thing was like, I'm like, what's your long term? Cause I usually will ask people, like, you know, what do you see yourself in five years? What's your long term goal, et cetera, et cetera. And he was like, I wanna write my poem and music. I wrote your poem. Like, that's cute. But what the, that's not gonna make us money, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but he ambitious, so he fall on your list then. Nah, okay, well maybe maybe ambitious is not the word. Okay, he's right. A different word, but right. nah. All right, so that's Let's, four. What's your fifth one? You gotta have a passport. I like to travel. Um, <laughs> I can't date somebody who doesn't travel. If you're just used to your little city. That says a lot because honestly, people who travel, who experience all the culture, you're more open-minded. You, um, and you have more to bring to the table versus somebody who's like stuck in a little city. I, it's funny every time I meet patients or just people in general. I'll be like, "Oh, where are you from?" And they'll be like, "Oh, I'm from Philly. I'm from here." And I'm like, "You lived all your life?" I'm like, yeah, I've never. Some people have never even been to New York or Jersey, and it's like, how you're right across the street. I know. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you got you got a passport. That's a nice. It's nice. I guess reasonable list. It's not that crazy. Because before I used to say you gotta have perfect teeth, you gotta be a certain height. Nah, you don't have to even do all that. I do like nice teeth, but yeah, certain height. I'm five foot. Okay, so everybody <laughs> pretty much taller than you. They are, but I'm not trying to. Nobody's five foot or five two. I'm sorry, not sorry. Because I'm five foot, but once I put my heels, I'm like five four. Right, I got you. Yeah. So he at least gotta be. By six. That's fair. That's fair. Hey, you want what you want. That's all right. All right. So, hey, I'm glad you at least got like a real, a realistic list. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not lucky for no six foot tall, six figure. Mm. Like, we make six figure. That's cool. But I'm, I know realistically, I was not looking for a bum. Like, I know I can break my table. It's just like, your hustle got to match my hustle. If I'm like going hardcore and doing this, like, you got to match my, you got to match my drive, you know? I feel that. Yeah. yeah. So where do you see yourself in like 10 years from now? Um, I actually haven't like thought much about that yet. Huh? Maybe I'll open up a practice on this. So I wanted to open a practice, but it's a lot of work and I'm a little lazy. It is a lot of work. So it is like the back end. So I'm just like, it's not as so maybe having my own practice uh, i don't know that's that's just it 
maybe having your own graduates. Okay. What about like living kids? You feel like you um, and like where would you be staying? Or not where would you be staying? Where are you thinking about staying? I would like to move somewhere with nice weather. So maybe like the south. I don't like the snow. Mm. And then I may or may not have kids by then. No, no. I don't want no kids if I'm not married. So if I'm married, I'll probably have kids. If I'm not married, I'm going to just be that rich auntie. And that's cool with me. Rich, that's cool with you? Yeah, that's cool with me. Hey, so I got a question with the rich auntie thing. Because I'll be playing around with like the, the auntie thing. What what does life look like for that rich auntie at like 55 when everybody else got kids and married and like what does the rich auntie do? Well, the rich auntie's always gonna be doing her and traveling, but honestly, looking from like patients, it gets lonely because I will talk to patients and like they'll some even some people be like they, they never wanted kids in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And then when they're sick or in that moment, yes, they get people that come around them. But, like, nobody's going to be there for you as much as you can. And, like, granted, not everybody kiss is there for them. But, like, you know, right. they're alone. And they'll get a niece or somebody. Like, nobody's really there to handle your affairs, hold your estate. So it gets lonely. But so if you're not you, sick, would you you're want that? Like, even, want that? even if you're not sick and you're healthy, like, other people taking trips, but they most likely taking trips with their family or their significant other. You know what I'm saying? Especially like in your 50s. I mean, just because you're the rich auntie don't mean you don't have a significant other. Oh, so you you for the streets still. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> you don't have to be for the streets just because you're not married. Oh, so you're just shacking up? Some people, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking not about me. people. Like, what is that? Because you the rich um, auntie. If I'm 50? I'll probably be married by then. If I'm not married, I'm going to just be traveling the world. Okay. Because that's outside of medicine, that's my favorite thing to do. That's my passion. Just travel. What's some of the uh, destinations that you got on your list? So I definitely want to go to Greece. That's supposed to be my honeymoon destination, but I'm probably going to make it there before I get married. Um, Why not just save it? Because I was saving Jamaica for I don't know how many years, and I ended up going to uh, Jamaica was my original honeymoon destination. I ended up going to Jamaica for my um, undergrad gift to myself, and I'm glad I did because I had a good time. So if you keep waiting, tomorrow is not promised. Life is not promised. I'm gonna keep waiting. I might not, never make it a Greece. That's true. So why not seize the moment and enjoy if I can? So Greece, Bali, um, Tanzania. Tanzania is probably gonna happen next year. Okay um ethiopia oh okay i'm going to south africa in december dang who are you going to these places with let me know <laughs> nah they're all girls trips but the uh-huh. south africa family's trip um my cousin's getting married so we're gonna go to south africa okay okay but all my trips been girls trips mm-hmm. rented trips good trips yeah okay. Hey, everybody be doing that girls' trips, all right? Girl, honestly, girls' trips are fun. I mean, I've never been on, like, a vacation or whatever, but I feel like I would like girls' trips more than that. Because mm-hmm. um, you do a lot more, and the vibe is it's just, it's a great vibe. It's great energy, you know? You've been on a vacation, right? Not yet. One day. What's a better vibe then if you ain't never been on, on a vacation? Because that's what I'm saying. Like, I've never gone on a vacation, but I feel like girls just might be better. Because it's more like sometimes you're on, like, with your significant other, you might be tired of them and just like, I need a break. But like, on a girl it's a big group, especially if all y'all know each other and get along, it's great. But if y'all don't get along, then it's a problem because that's too many extra in one room. But all the girls I've been on this been cool. Even if we have like little, like, you know, situation here and there, it's nothing that's caused like, I always see the memes. I was like, don't go to Miami with your friends because y'all can not come back not friends no more. I've been to Miami twice with my friends and we still friends. Oh, I never heard that one before. Well, right, yeah, it's not, it's always on internet. <laughs> it's, that's, it's a meme that's always like flooding on um, Instagram and like TikTok. No, okay. Okay. All right. So what, uh, I guess, what country would you live in outside of the ones you already visited? Oh, that's a good one. Just give me one. Well, Jamaica, hands down, right now. 
That's the best one you've been to as well? Yeah, that's that's my favorite destination I've been to, Jamaica. Mm, okay. Yeah, I love Jamaica. Because it reminds me of back home. It's like close to back home, but you still get like that luxury and all that other good stuff. Got you. Okay. Yeah. No, nah, I've never been to Jamaica. At least not yet. Oh, you, you should go. Really? You're okay. doing something wrong in life. If you have to that. But you should really go. Jamaica's a vibe. It's a great place. The food is great. The people is amazing. Mm-hmm. The music is great. Um, hmm. so what's your next upcoming trip? Well, I'm going to Miami for a bachelorette in August. <laughs> you just said that stuff about Miami. Are you going for a bachelorette party? I, yes. <laughs> I'm going for a bachelorette, so. Okay. <laughs> that's my next trip. When is that? August. Oh, that's like soon, soon. Yeah, my best friend's getting married. I'm the maid of honor, so okay. we're going to Miami. We got a a lit a lit itinerary. Uh, <laughs> hey, girls are like y'all be on it when it comes to planning stuff. I noticed. Oh that yeah, just, yeah. Men are horrible at that type of stuff, like horrible. Cause you guys just go with the flow, which is nothing wrong with that. That's fine too. Yeah, we do like a lot. Like we just like okay, what y'all want to do, and then we yeah, just, yeah. Okay. So if, okay, if you weren't a nurse, what other career would you choose? Surgery. I'll be a surgeon. Really? Dang, you said that quick. I always say that in my next life, when I come back, I'm going to be a surgeon. Dang, okay. All right. That's what's up. Why a surgeon? Um, I like cutting up people. So, no, I like, <laughs> oh, I like building things and fixing things. And I just, I, I love surgery, how they can like, put the body back together, break it apart and put it back together. I remember in nursing school, I always wanted to see like open heart surgery. Mm-hmm. And I saw it and I wasn't impressed as I thought it would be. Like, I thought it was about to like crack open the chest and all that stuff. So make a little incision, which was like, cool. They still got to the heart, but like, I was like, oh, that's it. But I love surgery. Um, I would definitely be a surgeon mm-hmm. in my next life. Uh, how has your um, background like influenced who you are today? Like as far as your upbringing and all that? Uh, let's see. So because I was sheltered as a kid, yeah. like I was like 18, my career was seven o'clock. Um, <laughs> most of the stuff my friends did, like going out and other stuff, sneaking out. I never did any of that stuff. So now I just be outside. I love outside. <laughs> not not in a bad way. <laughs> not in a bad way. Like I just love outside. Like I like going out. Well, I was like, yeah, I was outside, but it's not like it's not like I'm in somebody's club or anything like that. Like I just like being outside. I think like all those things like I didn't do during like my younger years because I'm about to be 30 next month in August. Um, my friends and them are like, they're tired because they used to be sneaking out and jumping out the window and doing all this stuff and staying out late. Right. Now I'm just like, now I'm playing catch up and stuff. But at the same time, like I'm grateful for like my upbringing because like, it saved me from like a lot of things right. that I see, like people go through and certain things I still don't have interest in it. Like, yeah, that's cool. I can do that, but I'm good. I'm good on that. And what you doing for the 30th? It's a big birthday. It's so funny. Nothing. The person that travel all the time. I literally oh. celebrated every birthday up to now. I remember when I started my um at my my previous job. Mm-hmm. I told my manager, I was like, yeah, we going to Mexico with it. She was like, how old you turn? I was like 26. She was like, that's not even an important birthday. <laughs> I was like, every birthday is an important birthday to me. But honestly, this year. Besides, okay, this year I had like a lot of weddings. I mean, a lot of weddings. I mean, three weddings, two of them and me of honor. Mm-hmm. Originally, me and my girlfriend was supposed to go to three countries in Africa. We was going to do Tanzania, Ethiopia, and um, and Kenya mm-hmm. for three weeks because she was turning 30 the day after my birthday. She turns 30, so it's going to be both of us. But my best friend is getting married the week of my birthday, so I kind of can't go because then like, I'm going to risk it and, like, God forbid, I can't make it back for the wedding. Or they say, like, oh, you got COVID, you got sick. So I say, you know, like, I'm just not. And, like, I have a whole year to be 30, so I can always do something, like, later in my 30. You know what I mean? But I decide, like, this is going to be, like, my year to reflect. This is my year to be calm. This is my year to just, like, you know, prepare for my 30s, see, like, what I want in my 30s. So I may do a dinner. I don't know yet. But right now, I have, like, nothing planned. Okay. And it's wild because, like I said, every birthday I've been out of the country, except for 2020, that's when COVID hit. But I had, like, a picnic 
a nice picnic outside, like the boohoo picnic theme and all that. But just like this year, I'm just like, I don't know. I don't feel like it. I'm right, cool. Uh, so I'm gonna ask you some rapid fire questions real quick. You just get oh. whatever come off your head. Okay. Uh, what motivates you to get up in the morning? My family. Nice. Um, so these are one word answers. What's, what's one word that best describes you? Determine. What was that? Determine? Determine. Okay. Uh, one word to describe your journey. Uh, Hmm. that's always a tough one for everybody <laughs> yeah like i don't um, <laughs> interesting interesting okay yeah. okay i ain't got that answer before that's okay that's good uh and then this one is not a one word but um what's the best part about being a black woman everything <laughs> and that's one word <laughs> I love um, on that I feel like Wonder Woman. I feel like I can do anything. I get the best of both worlds. Mm. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, thanks for doing this again. Uh, fellas, make sure you slide in her DM. She really ain't taking. She really single, so. Bruh. She like to travel. Uh, make sure you be at least six to uh, at least 150K. Uh, be in the gym a little bit. She don't want no uh, dad bots. Uh, you don't have to be in healthcare. She'll take whatever, right? But you're having me. Be a Christian. Um, be a family guy, and no, uh, no baby mama drama. That's good. Yep, yep. You got it. Right on. Right, nail it. Right on the. Right on. <laughs> you crazy. You All right, girl. Shout out your Instagram. All right. So my Instagram is semirific because I'm terrific. So that's S A M M I R I F I C. Don't be shaking your head at me. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye. bye.